welcome to another episode of the Player Nontra Podcast. This is episode 152. Achoo. Player Nontra Podcast. Where nobody actually plays on Nontra. <laughs> what? <laughs> what is that? Now. That's what it, uh, <laughs> Is that, said, is that what we're doing the now? Podcast. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 where am I? <laughs> How did I get her? I'm in a black void. Oh god, he's so, been he's been uh, kidnapped. <laughs> I got new inked this week. Yeah. Is more it ink. done? No. Nah. Is it part of the? Oh, okay. Uh, more shading, more stuff to add, but uh, yeah, it hurts like a bitch. Oh. I bet. Yeah. Well, I'm just tender all over. I think. So it just hurt. <laughs> I, I didn't think it would hurt this much on my forearm, but it does. Hmm. Yeah, it's, I wouldn't have expected the forearm to be super sensitive either. Yeah. Compared to the bicep or something, I don't know. Uh, inner bicep. The inner bicep. Oh, would that, be, yeah. that'd, be, that'd be bad. Uh, yeah. Elbows and like the inner elbow will hurt, which I have yeah. a little bit on. God yeah. damn. It hurts like a bitch. Uh, <sighs> ribs hurt. Foot, foot hurts. Uh, people do it on hands. Those hurt. <laughs> Like so the, the, the inside of palm. Yeah. Yeah, I can't even imagine. That's insane. Yeah, I, I told you last time about my dance teacher who got on her foot. Oh, yeah, that's crazy. Like, you don't, you don't do anything dumb. after. He was, yeah, she. Af- yeah, after to he be did fair, the, she uh, wasn't dancing. Yeah, she wasn't yeah. dancing, to be fair, but still. Yeah. <laughs> after he did, like, the elbow part for me, he was like, don't do, you know, don't bend it, don't exercise. Like, don't exercise. That's something I don't do. <laughs> well, <it's laughs> yeah, so I can follow that rule. It's so I hard. It's so difficult. <laughs> Right. It's going to be a struggle, oh, gosh. but I'll persevere. Struggle bus, struggle bus. I watched Captain Marvel. Did oh, you? Awesome. Mm. Did I, you like it? I know Sarah watched it. Did you watch it for? Yes. I haven't had it. I've, <laughs> I, this is going to be a bad podcast for me because I basically only worked for the past two weeks. Okay. I kind of have to. It's okay. <laughs> uh, God damn it, CW you... movie. I, I liked oh. it a lot. I liked it a lot. <laughs> Very funny. I don't. Yeah. Un- I don't understand where the SJW shit come from. <laughs> like seriously. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I mean, but I, just peop- I never. Just people are mad. I never put any, you know, stock in things said like whenever they use the yeah. word SJW. I ironically. Yeah. But yeah, I know. I enjoyed it way more than I thought I would. Honestly. Yeah, it's fun, right? Yeah, I mean the character sucks, but everything else, like, <laughs> I mean she's I just like boring. I mean she's just boring. I mean it's a very reg- normal, you know, high budget superhero movie. Type it's of a character. superhero movie. I think. I think for me, it has a lot more significance because um, one of the things I really liked about her character was that she really enjoyed her powers. Mm. One thing that's interesting when you look at a lot of um, super and, and Wonder Woman is kind of an exception to this, but when you look at a lot of like like even just in Marvel, actually, is a great example. When you look at the super heroines in Marvel, so I mean, the main two truly are uh, Black Widow and Scarlet Witch. They both are, like, resentful of what they can do. Scarlet Witch feels like she's a curse and that, like, she can do terrible things and that's what caused, you know, Avengers 2. And Black Widow feels, like, broken and a monster because of, like, what she went through and stuff like that. And unfortunately, I kind of understand the Black Widow one. They did have to break her to, like, train her yeah, to be but, but, spy, Yeah, but that's right? what I mean is, like, we get a lot of these... But, I mean, broken Scarlet characters. Witch was also broken, too. Mm. But, like, right. and, and it's kind it's of a really thing that you see... X-Men. Yeah, but unfortunately, it's a little, like, you get this kind of too much, I have found, whenever you have any kind of super heroine where, like, they're resentful or it's really angsty about their powers. And Mm. so that's one of the reasons I, and I think maybe that's why people aren't really seem, and part of it, I think, is Captain Marvel's a lot like Superman in some ways, too, and so I think that's also kind of hard. Um, But I feel like a lot of people might be feeling that way because she's one of the few that, like, genuinely enjoys what she can do. And, you know, that, and that, that was her whole, like, story was finding out that, you know, she was being held back. Yeah. So, um, but I, I mean, I get it. She's not. She feels like a real person, honestly. Yeah. She doesn't seem as angsty for sure. Yeah. Um, and I think that might have a bit to do with it, but that's why I loved it. But I, I can kind of see though, where you might be feeling like it's kind of boring or not as much there, but I really enjoyed it. But I I like that she was just, you know. Just a person. Yeah. It's it's refreshing. Um, yes. Jude Law. Yes, I like Jude Law as a villain. I like him. He did well. Ooh, he did really well. I, I forgot it was Jude Law. Yeah, I like yeah, Jude Law. I forgot it was him too. Like yeah, Jude he does a good job. Yeah. He did a really good job in the kind of role he needed to play. Um, I was really just of what he represents to the story. He did a real. They did a really good job. Uh, the guy who plays the uh, the main scroll. I like him. He's yeah. funny. 
He has an Australian He's accent, son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> the He's actor Australian. I can't remember his name now. I, uh, I don't know, but it's yeah. pretty funny. The movie is just, you know, I, entertaining, funny. It's entertaining. I just want a buddy. Like, I also love how it kind of turned into a buddy cop of her and Fury, though. Yeah. Like, that was, to me, that was really fun. Like, they just became an inst. They have, like, such good buddy cop chemistry, too. They did really, did really good. Was his face CG'd or was it just good makeup yeah. and less facial hair? It was some CG. I believe. Really? I imagine it had to have been. It was really well know. done, honestly. Yeah, yeah it looked really not... good. Yeah. I mean, it's I have really to question myself. Yeah, it's a I long actually didn't ways know. from Beowulf. It's a long ways from. Uh, I mean, the start Star Wars one you can see kind of, but from afar, if you look really closely, and if they didn't do the close ups and like focus They're the on camera Carrie on Fisher? that, Carrie Fisher and the dead dead guy, Carrie the Fisher general, in general oh, the completely tarp. dead guy, yeah, I, a completely a, dead yeah. guy, a completely dead person is like a whole different league of CGI. Yeah, <laughs> not just like was it not the same? Uh, was it not the same technology they used? The young Leia and the general dead guy. I don't know. I thought Young Leia, they actually had a person that they changed, but I don't yeah. know. Yeah, uh, maybe. I'm not sure. But I could be wrong. It just felt like, to me, General Tark had way more CGI. It was way more obvious yeah. to me than Leia. T- to me personally, um, it was more obvious. But maybe it's because, for like... For me, it was the other way around. I don't know why. Oh. Oh, okay. Maybe it's because with Leia, for me, because she's younger, they could make the skin smoother, so it wasn't as obvious. Yeah. Mm. While with the other guy, it had to have wrinkles, and so it was, to me, more obvious. Uh. I don't know. Her eyes looked a little funny. I will say that. Her eyes looked a little funny. Um, but yeah. But yeah, Captain Marvel is a really good movie. It was so funny. I, I loved it. It was funny, yeah. It has um it, it has there's that 90s charm. I I think I remember someone was saying like, I don't know, is it trying to be like Guardians of the Galaxy? I was like, eh, a little bit, but I don't know. I I really enjoyed it. So. Uh I'm not sure if it's happening over there, but apparently people are scalping Avengers tickets over here. Yeah, 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 they it are. Yes. Oh, it's they are. The fuck? For a little while. I mean, yep. I'll just wait for fuck's sakes. I'm I know. Paying, like, like, people are selling yeah, it for like $150. Oh, no, it's worse than that. $5,000. $5,000. $5,000. I mean, it's a cool franchise That's... now, but it ain't worth 5000 bucks for a No, I was so mad. I was like, freaking scalpers. Um, I managed to get freaking tickets fanboys. on opening night. <laughs> nice. I actually, I, I literally don't like to go opening night. It's just way too many people. I usually, uh, I honestly, I didn't start doing opening night until recently. And the only reason I am is because my partner kind of has to go like yeah, ASAP <laughs> to see these movies because otherwise like someone will spoil it for her because of the mm. job she has to do. So yep. because that was her main worry. What was the movie? Which movie was it? There was a movie that we did not get opening night for. Like and Panther? we didn't think we would. Was it the, oh, I think it was The Last Adventure. Was it that long ago? I guess it might have been. I think it was that, yeah, I think it was the last Avengers movie. We were not going to go opening night, and then she last minute got midnight tickets because she was like, I have to see it because otherwise people will tweet at me, like, spoilers if I'm not careful, basically. Like, she was really afraid of just dealing with a spoiler situation. So I used to not go opening night just because the same thing. I wasn't, eh. But I've been going to opening nights for, I went for opening for Captain Marvel. <laughs> um, now for this one, I'm going to go and other Avengers movies and, and, and Star Wars movies, too. It On is, the plus it, side, it is a Marvel movie, so you're not really there for the plot anyway. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, it's also, it's it's kind of, when it's a Marvel movie or a Star Wars movie, it's kind of a fun experience because people yeah. overall are usually, like, hyped about it. So, like, for instance, in the Captain Marvel movie, they had a really nice, like, thank you for, for Stan Lee, and everybody mm, in the movie, yeah. like, clapped, you know, because it was clapping for it. So, like, um... You know, or there was like a moment with the Star Wars movies. I was there on opening night that was really funny. Like everyone just like lost their minds. It was I forget what part it was, but anyway, um, it's I, I it crowded wise, it's not fun, but like it's kind of a fun experience when you're there with like everybody else because nobody knows what to expect. You know, because mm, yeah. no one has seen it. But it's not for everybody for sure. <laughs> it's difficult to get, especially for Avengers. Uh huh. Yeah, we we had to we have to go to a theater. It's a little far from us. Uh, mm. cause they they had like a wait time online, and uh, so yeah, my partner was just waiting like fifteen minutes. When is to, it coming like, out? Look around. N- the on month? the twenty fifth for us. Oh, this month. April. Yes, this month. A- April twenty fifth. Damn. So I'll be seeing it in a couple weeks. I literally took the day of day off from work for me the next day partially because i wanted to just in general wanted to take the day off but i also was like i'll probably be seeing avengers at midnight <laughs> i yeah. just want to go to bed after yeah <laughs> what, uh, what day is that? i remember 25th thursday uh thursday they usually come out on thursdays right 
They usually are midnight, like Friday midnight, so it's right, like right. Thursday night. Ah, uh, right, right, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I definitely want to take the day off because I that's what happened you, last year. I last night I, I last minute went and then I just had no sleep. <laughs> isn't uh, Shazam coming out pretty soon? Yeah. I have like no this idea. weekend. Yeah, it's Is quite it really? uh, April maybe it's out already. I saw a review for it today, like almost a full review. Yeah, I've been seeing reviews. Yeah. I haven't looked actually. I haven't I feel like I haven't heard anything about uh, it. it's showing today in my local cinema, so I'm guessing it's okay. out for yeah, you guys probably. as well. Yeah, it must be. Oh, uh, it's, okay. it's a good. It's a good thing they came out like two, three weeks before Avengers. Yeah, yeah. don't try to compete with that. DC. Yeah, you, you ain't gonna win. Don't. You're not gonna win. Um, how? What's the? What are the review saying? Um, that is good. It shamelessly hmm. rips off big, but um, that's not a bad thing. It works for it. Okay. The child actors I've... are pretty good. Yeah, good stuff. Okay, my friends just haven't talked about wanting to see it, but I have a lot of friends. They're not anti DC, but they don't. They, they don't really watch the DC movies. I mean, you, you as don't much, can't so. blame them. It's been bad. It's been horrible. Uh, yeah, I don't. I really don't. But. Except for Wonder, Wonder Woman, pattern. and some people say Aquaman. It, yeah, Aquaman. <laughs> Aquaman is like a fun romp, but it's mm. not. It, it's a fun romp, but like it's not like a good movie. It's like, it's mm. like, it's like a, it's it's like the first Thor movie. <laughs> is it like Triple X or something? It's like huh? a, just a fun action movie. Yeah, it's just a fun action movie. Jason Momoa is super charming, um, and that's about it. Like, you kind of want, honestly, like, if you think Jason Momoa is kind of hot and charming, it's worth it for that. He's He mm-hmm. does a good job, um, but it's not really worth it for much else. <laughs> the storyline is a little silly. Um, uh, they totally ripped off uh, from How to Train Your Dragon 2 at one part. Mm. <laughs> I swear to God they did. <laughs> um not with the dragons. Just oh, with the... Uh, talking about how to train your dragon. Uh, there's going to be a uh, CG movie. Uh, it's not about how to train your dragon, but but it oh, looks okay. like it looks like animation that uses the same oh, okay. style. I was going to say, the third which, movie did come out. Which is weird because I didn't know it came it's out. a movie for Dragon yes, Quest. Did. Oh, they're, interesting. They're making Bizarre? a movie based on Dragon Quest V. And the art style looks kind of like how to train your dragon. Which is weird because Dragon Quest is well known to be Akira Toriyama's the Dragon Ball guy, uh, animation style. And you you know when yeah. you look at him, you you look at the character. It's just, it's just weird. Maybe they're going for the international audience because Dragon Ball might be big for the nerd kingdom, but it's not actually that big, right? I mean, it's sure. big in Japan. Well, I'm guessing. It's is I mean, it huge in the it's West? Pretty, it's it's pretty mainstream here. Yeah, really? yeah, I would say so. I wouldn't say it's yeah. as big, but as, maybe as not as there, big. But. But like, uh, I mean, it the, was a lot of people's childhoods. Uh, does, do so. the movies, the movies, do they get um, cinema releases? Uh, Dragon Ball. No. Uh, um, the oh. the last one did, because I saw it in theaters. <laughs> that was one that my. But girlfriend it might might, might not be a national release. Might be like a niche it's release. Like select theaters. Sometimes they I do that, right? So. Yeah. It might be, or it's a very like short run. Mm. One, That's pretty common. One screening. Mm. Cause we saw it at our local theater, so we didn't like. Cause usually, like, like say your name, I never got to see. Cause it was literally only like mm. the closest theater was like in Ann Arbor, which is an hour and a half from me, and like a very small theater. Um, but so it wasn't like that. Um, but I think it was a very short run. Yeah, it's gonna be weird to see a Dragon Quest thing. I'm gonna watch it, obviously, but it's gonna be weird watching a Dragon Quest thing that doesn't look like a Toriyama car- a different character. Different style. Mm. <laughs> so, uh, what you guys do? Did I tell you guys that I finished um, uh, Game of Thrones? <laughs> Thrones? Did I finish Game of Thrones last time? I don't remember. I don't think you'd finish. I think it. you do. I don't think you finished it. I think you were okay. at season you, seven you, or something. You talked about watching. Finally it finished. <laughs> I mean, it's been a couple of weeks, so yeah, finally done. Cheezers. <laughs> um, I was telling my brother the other day. I was like, "Yeah, we were watching like three episodes a day," and he's like, "That's intense." And I was like, "Yeah, we got through <laughs> it." <laughs> I had never seen it. Um. It's just a, it was a lot, um, but yeah, it's it was it kind of the last season especially kind of went by in a blur because I think we saw the whole thing in two days because it was like on the weekend, so it was especially just like, <sighs> um, I mean, uh, the famous romance I thought was a little rushed, but I knew why it had to be rushed. They didn't really have the time to build it, <laughs> so mm-hmm. I don't blame them. I don't think it's uh, a bad romance. I, 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 it was it was even one that when I read the books I kind of predicted might happen, so I wasn't really surprised. It's one of those romances that if it had more season time to build up it would be really cute, but <laughs> they, had, they had seven episodes, so gotta make this quick. Um, 
but yeah, we'll see. It's gonna be pretty crazy. It's gonna be very bloody next season. Next season. I mean, they're like six episodes, an hour and twenty minutes per episode. Thank God I don't have to try to binge through that. Yikes. Um. But yeah, I have to say one thing I will say that I appreciate with having to see all this is like, you know, some people have FOMO, like fear of missing out. Mm -hmm. I have that, but I have the opposite reaction where, like, I just avoid things. So when I have FOMO, I just, like, hide under my bed, like, metaphorically. So, like, I wasn't really watching. So, like, I kind of wanted to be up to date on the Game of Thrones stuff just because, like, I knew so many people watching it. But at the same time, like, I never really went out to do it just because I'm weird like that. So I will say it's kind of nice to actually be in the up and ante of a cultural phenomenon, <laughs> as weird as that sounds. Um, but, yeah, it'll be... It'll be a complete series I've actually seen from the beginning to end, so at least I can say that. <laughs> nice. I can't say that for many things. So, But yeah, I mean, it gets Game of Thrones. We all know what's coming. So, it, I think it starts next weekend, I think, is the first episode that comes out. So I'm sure so. I'll watch it then. Uh, American Gods just started season two like a few oh, weeks yeah. ago. I think there's like, three or four episodes out now. Still haven't started watching yeah. it yet. I need to get to it. I haven't either. For good things about it. My brother read the book. He really liked it. So I don't know much about the show. Did I watch anything else? Did he play anything much else? It's been... I was also... Like, last... My last two weeks of work were really, really rough. <laughs> so I, I feel you there, foe. Um, I've just been doing a lot of the other work that I do. So it's just been that and sleep and work so i'm trying to think if i did see anything else though uh, I think so. we'll just a quick one <laughs> do you guys know about that did i share about that whole get free switch online with your amazon prime thing uh, i don't I think, think you shared but i know about after the episode after the episode yes before. i know about mm. it because i we talked about it recently actually yes. yes that is a thing three months are free and then if you still have your uh, subscription, subscription within 60 days nine months yeah after 60 days after 60 days, you get nine So I'm not sure if you subscribe for two months or, you know, it starts on the third month, but it's still cheaper and you get a bunch of other stuff. So it's pretty good. I have the three months free now. I'm waiting for the nine months now. Yeah. If I had a Switch, I would be doing it. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's super worth it. Uh, you get American Gods and all that shit as well. Um, Ooh, mm, nice. Since you can watch, you know, on Prime Video. That's true, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what did you do, for? Um... I watched an old movie called Logan's Run from like 86, which I thought would be worse. So it was kind of, it wasn't quite bad enough to be good, but it was still kind of interesting. Um, I watched a Tim Burton movie called Ed Wood, which is about the worst director of all time. Like a real person. Mm. He actually won the award for being the uh, worst director of all time. It was Johnny funny. Depp, right? Johnny Depp plays Ed Wood. It's quite old movie, I believe. I yeah, mean, the movie funny, itself. Johnny Depp won like an award for his performance. Yeah. That's the worst director. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of funny with that same uh, the room guy. Yeah, it's a, the, it's a lot of parallels between him and yeah. Tommy Wiseau. Um, I've been playing Smash Brothers. I picked up Smash Brothers. Nice. And I've been doing the, so. Smash Brothers. The single player for Smash Brothers largely revolves around this thing called the Spirit Board, mm. which is like um, picture like a board game board with different locations that you can move around in, um, and each location is like a, a fight, and Different oh, challenges, right? If you do, yeah, they're pretty sadistic in combination. <laughs> it's just like, like at a certain point, like I'm not having fun, but I can't stop and admit defeat, so I have to keep doing this. Um, Are you playing online at all? Frustrating. No, I'm not playing online. I haven't. I need to unlock all the characters still. That's what I'm working on. I don't know who mm -hmm. I like. I was thinking of maining Little Mac because I like boxers, but I was looking up like his moves online because a lot of the champions have moves that like. It's hard to tell what they do from using them. It's like, oh, yeah, if you, like, um, like reuse in the game. And his B is a, a Shoryuken. Or no. What's the what's the fire? Are fireballs Shoryukens? No. An upper punch is a Shoryuken, right? Hadoken is the fireball. Yes, thank you. So B is a, is a Hadoken. But if you do the quarter circle B, like mm -hmm. in the actual arcade game, it's like a different Hadoken. And so it's like these little secret things like that, which I'm not going to discover through experimentation. But I looked mm -hmm. up Little Max moves. And apparently he's like the bottom of the bottom of all of the roster. Oh, you mean like, like a, well, you saw the tier list or something? I did. Uh, <laughs> like maybe I'll pick some. I don't want to pick top tier, but but they do update the game, right? A little off putting. And tiers do move about. Sometimes it just I takes a pro so. player to change the tier. Sometimes that's true because I think looking at the top tier, almost everybody in the top tier has a counter. 
like Peach mm. or Marth. And Little Mac has a counter, so I don't know. Like, I'm not I mean, into... For, for, for single player, he's fine. Right. But I don't need to, like... Do you think the game is worth just for the single player? And maybe on and off mm, local... No. Local... Local multiplayer yeah, stuff? Yeah, I think it's worth it just on and off for local multi, for mul- yeah, local multiplayer. And just, like... I I, I kind of wish I had spent zero time on the spirit board and instead just spent time just doing random brawls against random NPCs. I think that would have been more fun and probably would have unlocked things just as fast. <laughs> Mm. like i'm not um, s- not that into competitive fighting games but all the mm, all the yeah. tier lists and stuff and seeing pro players play that, that that's interesting for me the meta interests me yeah the meta interests yeah uh but i wish like because super smash brothers brawl has one of the best story modes of like any fighting game i've ever played and so i, I kind of wish brawl is a game like kit that. one yes no is it the end where you fight the gloves I think they all end with you fighting gloves. But yeah. It's the first one with Sonic that I'm thinking of. The first one that introduced Final Smashes. I think it's I think it's the GameCube. I think it's the one after the GameCube one. Sorry. This is the, this is the N64 one. Melee is the GameCube one. Brawl is one after that, which I guess is for the Wii. Was that a Wii one? I have no idea. I don't know. I don't know. That was five, right? I have no clue. I know they I know he skipped a couple here and there. Probably, okay. maybe. Anyway, I played that a little bit. Um, I played a little bit of Grim Dawn, which I actually Ooh, really nice. like. It's nice playing an RPG that you haven't played before. So, uh, like, the talent tree is all new and exciting. And the mm, possibility is yeah. like, oh, what happens if I do this? What happens if I do this? And it's not like all... Uh, it's not like an and optimal build to go And it's fun anything. because the, the talent trees are not just about, you know, increasing damage and shit. It actually changes the way your attacks, uh, you know proc certain things yeah, that, and stuff like that it's there's a lot of interesting choices to make because when you level up you get three talent points mm. and you can spend those points to either increase your class level or to increase the power of a move yeah. but increasing your class level also unlocks additional moves and yep. mods for the old moves so there's some like really like um oh yeah the min maxing in this game is insane do. yeah so i don't want to look it up oh yeah because that's just going to be the, a, i mean the, i did it wrong already and be horrified uh it's one of those games where it has a freaking web browser calculator for you know experimentation, like a I'm like a sure. payday payday two, or Path of Exile. Mm. But I love Grim Dawn. Are you playing it on Steam or GOG? Steam. Nice. We can play it together um, if you if you're available. Yeah. I haven't I, played yeah, it for a really fun. Uh, there's a new expansion um, and stuff out too. Can you respec? You can respec, and okay. while you need to cool. pay with the in-game normal currency, yeah, that's fine. Uh, it. It's pretty much quite cheap after a while because okay. you get so rich. So it's cool. pretty much free almost. But yeah. Uh, awesome. what, what classes did you pick? Uh, uh, did you so unlock your second out, one? I, yes. Okay. Uh, I started out as the second class. The like pyro. or It's not the pyro. The demolition expert, whatever it's called. Um, yeah, dem- demolitionist. Yeah. I think so, yeah. Um, and, and I decided I wanted to specialize in two-handed ranged weapons, like guns and stuff. Same thing, King Man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. so, so that meant it seemed logical to me that my second class should be whatever the last one is, like the, the shaman, I think it is. Because uh, the shaman specializes in like elemental two-handed weapons. A cultist? No, it's not a cultist. Oh, okay. A cultist... I think a cultist is kind of like what you think of when you think of like a witch hunter, like a sword yeah, in one yeah. hand and a pistol I cho- in the other. I chose a cultist and demolitionist, which makes a pyromancer. I honestly don't remember. Okay. I almost chose a cultist because they looked really cool, but I didn't because I, I, I really just wanted to focus on just like shotguns and rifles. Hmm. <laughs> it was like I, two have, I big boomsticks. I haven't played it in a long time, but that build that I chose is a DPS build, I believe. It's like pure oh, DPS. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm going for as well. DPS, maybe a little CC. I'm uh, trying to also. I'm playing it with a college buddy, so I'm trying to mm-hmm. make it have synergy. And um, one of the things the demo guy can do is have like an aura, which increases everybody's elemental damage. Yeah, so it's kind of nice to get that. Uh, There's a. Uh, I'm not sure if it's been updated or like patched to nerf it, but one of the most OP builds is Summoner. Okay. So they're like two based thing. Pet based, yeah. Pretty much. Pet bases are always OP. Yeah. And you can have like three or two pets at one time. So it's pretty <laughs> insane. That's like a big giant bear thing that tanks everything. So 
Uh, cool. Grim Dawn is amazing. I love it. Cool. I'm looking forward to playing more of it. It's interesting comparing it to Van Helsing because I feel like it's just a lot more polished. Like it just feels yeah. to play, kind of. I mean, uh, because they made the Titan Quest game, which also is the dual class system, so they have experience uh, making this. Yeah. I think I have that game, but that game's also kind of old. So that, that oh, one yeah, doesn't feel as good from actual yeah. control perspective. But one is basically like Victor- Victorian, with like. And the other one is like Greek mythology stuff. But I love it because of the dual class yeah. system. It's just fun. Yeah, dual class systems are fun. I liked that in Guild Wars 1. They kind of got rid of that in later. Because, I mean, it's hard to make a, gu- a competitive dual class system because it's just it's almost impossible to like balance. There's always mm. going to oh, be yeah. like a couple clearly superior combos, which isn't great. Because it's hard. Like, you can respec, but you can't really respec to the point where you choose different classes in these sorts yeah. of things. Which is fine, but then it makes means balance is more important if you're trying to be competitive. I'm um, glad you're liking Grim Dawn. I kind of had a feeling you yeah. would. <laughs> uh, to me, I couldn't get into Diablo 3, honestly. I don't know why. Mm. But Grim Dawn is a no-brainer for me. It's probably my favorite action RPG. Well, Grim this. Dawn certainly doesn't have the same RPG elements. Like You don't really have any meaningful yeah, I play most, decisions to spend. It's mostly the gameplay for me. Yeah, but I mean, the one thing that Diablo 3 does super, super well is you, so you, you get um, like a ton of moves and you can only pick six of them and then each one has a different like passive buff for it. So you can create like drastically different builds and play styles per class, which is Can you respec? Cool. Yes, it's free. You can respec oh, at nice. any time. Oh, very, very any, nice. Uh, any but hub. you can't yeah. change to another class or anything, right? Correct. Right. Um, and then it's also, uh, maybe Grim Dawn will have this problem, but Diablo 3 Endgame is super reliant on gear because set bonuses yeah. even more drastically change how moves work and I legendaries think, do the same thing. So I think yeah. what I like about Grim Dawn is what you see is what you get and Diablo and Path mm. of Exile are, um, what, what do they call those nowadays? Services, something services, life services. I mean, it's a game that you're supposed, to, you're supposed to keep going back, uh, keep supposed to spend money in it. It's like an online thing. Well, Grim Dawn is uh, like a... A Skinner box? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So it's like a Anthem or Warframe, you know, like a online kind of... It's meant to be okay. updated yeah, yeah. and the seasons and stuff. So I'm, I'm more into single player stuff. That's why Grim Dawn kind of just, you know... I, I definitely like games that I can finish. Oh, yeah. Because Diablo 3, you finish a story, and that's when the... That's why I hear... This is what I hear about... Starts, yeah, yeah that, that's what I hear. The game, the game starts after you finish it. Pretty much. That's when the repetition really kicks in. And, I, and I feel kind of... Grim Dawn is more fun single player versus Diablo 3. Oh, that could that could be. Like, Diablo 3 is... I actually have a hard time playing Diablo 3 multiplayer because uh, you get so powerful that... It just gets really hard for two people to like stay together and keep up because they're just killing everything on the screen so quickly, so fast. Mm. That if one person's like slightly better than the other, they kind of just end up doing all the work. That would probably fuck up my frames as well. Everyone's just a glass cannon in that game. Mm. Like <laughs> your damage far outstrips your survivability. It's kind of not great, but it does mean you avoid the path of exile problem I was having, where a lot of fights just evolve to you standing stationary, going hit, hit. Hit and it's like mm-hmm. a race, it's just like a DPS race, and you have like heals per hit, so it's just that's not fun either. Like, I like dynamic fights a little more, and it's hard to do in that style of game, I find. But some games are better than others. Um, so I think that's all I, all I watched, all I did. I've almost finished rewatching Rick and Morty. Um, oh, I watched uh, Netflix has a anthology series called Love, Death, and Robots, which is kind of like Sounds the familiar. Animatrix. Oh, okay. It's getting a fair amount of talk online. Uh, basically, just each episode is completely unrelated to any other episode. Just a bunch of shorts. Like the longest episode, I think, is like 17 minutes, and the shortest episode is like five minutes. And so it's just a. It's almost like watching a bunch of like art school senior projects. Animation. Uh, what is it on projects. again? Netflix. It's on Netflix. Um, oh, okay. It's part of a series, cool but it's like individual stories, right? Like Black Mirror. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. Um, without as much strong social commentary. Some are just mm-hmm. really cool concepts. Some are just kind of dumb. Uh, they're not a huge commitment, so it's kind of nice. I, don't know, I, I liked it on the whole, but there were a lot of um, 
not super new concepts, I guess. Mm-hmm. Or it's like, it's like, yeah, it's a joke, I guess. I don't know. Some of them try to have a twist. It's like, you didn't have a twist. Don't try to have a twist. <laughs> so, um, um... That's it. That's me. Did you do anything else, Sarah? I can't... I'm trying to remember. It's probably just Game of Thrones. That's that's quite a commitment, I think it's just honestly. a lot of Game of Thrones. <laughs> it just kind of came by in a blur. I'm very glad we finished it when we did, because I, I wouldn't have been able to handle it during my work weeks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I did quite a few things. Uh, I played a game yeah. called TikTok A Tale for Two. Uh, I've shared it on the Discord yeah, chat. You, I saw it from you. <laughs> so I think like there was a launch offer within the first couple of days where if you buy one copy, you get two copies. So it's technically 50% off, right? Um, and it's already a cheap game. Uh, it's yeah. a, It's not multiplayer, but it has that... Um, okay, so to finish the game, you need two players to play, right? It doesn't actually connect to each other. You don't have to connect to each other's game or anything online. It has that... Uh, so on my screen, I see a set of puzzles and, uh, and the uh, solution is on the other person's screen. So player one, player two kind of thing. Mm. Before you start the game, you choose oh. who's player one, player two. So you get okay. different sets of things that you need to tell each other to solve the puzzles. And I liked it. It was in like two, three hours. It's quite short, but the puzzles were fun and... Uh, it has like a creepy horror ish vibe to it. It's quite good. Okay. And it's a good thing you don't have to be online, so uh I played that. I played I've been playing XCOM two like the whole week. I'm like forty plus hours in, I'm gonna finish my first campaign. Oh my god, it's so good. I just had that after playing Mutant Year Zero, I just had a tactics <laughs> like, I kind of just need to play more tactics games. And uh, XCOM mm-hmm. 2 is really fun. And uh, I put in, like, some, you know, cosmetic mods. Uh, put in some voice pack mods to have, like, you know, <laughs> voices on Megatron and shit. So, it's kind of... It's, honestly, that's super fun. Um, I'm playing it on easy. Sue me. Okay. But it's, uh, you know, I, I don't want get, to... I get challenged in my real life. So, when I play games, I don't want to fucking yeah, get challenged. Enough. I, also I, don't I totally like understand. Losing like, like a, an RPG with permadeath is not my idea of a fun time either. Oh yeah, not that XCOM is an RPG per se, but it has you know. I know what you, you mean. RPG though. your your yeah. units. You don't want to lose the time you invest in. Yep. So XCOM two is good, very very good. Uh, I watch a game called uh, no, I watch a game. I watched a thing called Bullet to the Face. <laughs> it's uh-huh. a six episode mini series thing and it's canadian and it's weird okay so i don't even know where <laughs> Go to begin. On. the reason why my partner showed it to me is because i love eddie izzard and eddie izzard is the bad guy in this oh fun um he basically plays himself he talks like himself the the mannerisms everything is just himself like on stage which is you Not know even funny. acting he's just yeah he's <laughs> just himself <laughs> yeah um so it's about it's set in like a. I'm not sure if it's post apocalyptic. Not, not post apocalyptic. It's not dystopian or utopian, but it kind of has a vibe to that. And it has a okay. vibe of like Sin City, those mm. kind of stuff. So it's just like, you know, weird looking. Yeah. Um, Neon stylized lighting. Yeah, it's very stylized lighting, honestly. And it's about this assassin type character that got shot in the face. Hence the name Bullet to the Face. Yeah by his uh, girlfriend slash partner in crime because mm. Eddie Izzard told her to. And um, he got a face transplant, like face off. Oh, uh-huh, so yeah. So before he got shot in the face, he killed the cop. And they took the cop's face to put it on his. So he he's masquerading <laughs> as the cop to take down the bad guys. And it's just fucking hilarious. It's so fucking weird. And it's amazing. And I wish there's more What's than six on? episodes. Uh, honestly, it's very, very obscure. You probably have to find a download okay. for it. It's called Bullet What's to the, the Face. Name? Bullet well, to the right, Face. Of course. So just try to find it somewhere. It's only six episodes. Each episode is like uh, less than 30 minutes. Like the comedy kind of runtime. Cool. And it's just so funny. And the characters are just exaggerations of stereotypes. And it's just... Mm. His, his partner, who he killed and now is wearing the face, just cries constantly every time he sees the guy. <laughs> just, it's, it's fucking hilarious. I love it. Um, 
that that's a weird thing. I wish I wish there, there were more episodes. Uh, so I so that's the that's the thing. Go and watch Bullet to the Face, and uh, oh, you remember like maybe three four weeks ago they were doing that Splatoon two free trial demo thing, and I was like, oh my god, yeah. I can't believe. So yes. that free trial is over, but uh-huh. I'm still playing Splatoon two because I fucking bought it. Fuck you, Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> God they always damn. trick you. Yeah. They always trick you. It's so much fun. What the fuck? Uh, okay, never mind. But yeah, Splatoon 2. Not fair. And I got the f- technically free, you know, online thing. So that's that's cool. Get to play online. I was ready you to just... Tetris 99? Yeah, I was ready to pay 20 bucks just to play Splatoon 2. That was how much I loved this freaking <laughs> game. <laughs> Does it have... Can you play it against bots if you wanted to? Nope. Oh, dang. Uh, There's like a... Oh, no, sorry. There's like a really short single player thing that you can play. Okay. But it's not worth getting that game just for that. Got it. The yeah. fun part, because the gameplay is different. Okay, not the gameplay is different. The the the, the objectives of the stages is different. So my favorite mm. mode is Turf Wars, where you try to color as much of the stage with your ink, right? That's my favorite mode. And the single player stuff is not about that. So it's not, you know, it's not that fun. Uh, But yeah... Nintendo, keep taking my money, son of a bitch. <laughs> I tried Tetris 99. I don't know what's happening. I just, I'm just trying to put things down and people start attacking me. I don't know what to do. It's just weird. <laughs> At least I don't finish I last though, who, so yeah. I had a friend who won it once, got first place. Oh, nice. I have no yeah, idea what I'm doing, honestly. She's really good at it, though. She loves Tetris. Also, another thing. I can't believe anybody was excited for that NES stuff. It's... Not good. I mean, the games are fine, <laughs> but like the emulation of the games, I feel like I hear sound problems and like some, like there's weird things with the graphics going on. Like the emulation is not a hundred percent. And you know how that's pretty bad. You know how like modders have been doing it for a long time now, and they've been doing it really well, better Nintendo. So it's just annoying. I don't. I I have it on. I I, I downloaded, it, but it's not something I play. Uh, so yeah, I did quite a lot of shit this past couple of weeks. Oh, nice. Busy, busy. Busy, busy. Uh, it helps that I took a week off, so. Oh, <laughs> that would do that it. That explains <laughs> it. My week has been next come to anything else, honestly. That's it. <laughs> um, so yeah. News time? News. Yeah, let's go. News time. Uh, bunch of... Stuff got announced and released. Risk of Rain 2 just hit 500k nice. players. You can... Oh, right, because you can get into the early access. Uh, yeah, you buy... Uh, the first few days, they also did a buy one, buy, buy one free one Aww. kind of deal. I didn't notice that. I don't know that I would have done it, though. I shared just, it. I, I shared it. Yet. I believe I shared You'd, it. Okay, okay. I think so. I'm not sure. So I bought it. I bought one and for another one for my friend. Uh, we both were into Risk of Rain 1. But yeah, apparently they're doing really well and people are really happy. I still haven't tried it yet. I have it, but I still haven't tried it yet. I really need to get to it. Um, well, the first one was good. It had mm. real bad network issues, though. Oh, like, yeah, I, it was bad. It was real hit or miss. They, they probably worked this one out. Hopefully. Yeah. It's over the shoulder, which is a little, or third person mm. more, which is interesting. Not not side scroller. I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah. Uh, Borderlands 3 was announced. Uh, everybody know it that. It was announced. <laughs> uh, but it's being a, it's going to be a six months exclusive on the Epic Game Store. The Epic Store. Wah, wah. The, the PlayStation versions and all that are going to come at the same time. It's just that Steam will have to wait for six months. So it will be yeah. it will release in September 13th. So that would make it release in around March or April or something of next oh, year. Yikes. Yikes. Mm. All right. And it's, you know, I mean, you can ex- you can import or export your Steam's friends list. So technically, if everybody's on board, you can play Borderlands 3 with all your Steam friends still. But uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Enough. So the new From Software game also been getting a lot of buzz because it just released a couple of weeks ago. Sekiro something Ninja yes. Dies Shadows twice. Never die. The new Dark Soulsian game. Shadows Never Cry or something. I don't know. <laughs> something weird in Japanese Sekiro like. Sekiro the new From game uh, yeah. and every time a new From software game comes out the talk of uh, having an easy difficulty also come about uh, of course yeah so they're uh, ableist games so some people are like no 
gatekeepers and the other people are like but my achievements and other people are like but like you know i have only have one thumb and like two fingers on each hand kind of thing (laughs) so like can you guys chill a bit (laughs) you chill a little bit i the whole argument to me is a little eye rolly like to me like i don't force i don't say i don't like say like all games must have an easy mode like I, I'm not gonna say that, you know. I do think there. I do think having difficulty modes is really important for games because of for many people who, you know, for for whatever reason. Um, it, the my only thing about like I call them Dark Soulsian games, whatever. The only Souls thing about like, like oh, but Dark Souls Souls games, you know, they have to be hard. That's the whole thing. I'm like, what a horrible description for a no, genre. No, that's the thing though. That's the that's the description given by fans. That's not yeah. the description given by the Air game developer. <laughs> yes, the and that's, game developers. And that's right. The game developers' vision on it, and there are multiple interviews that you go in. You know, just not just for Sekiro, like Dark Souls and Bloodborne, yeah. blah blah blah. Their main thing is to make the player overcome something and the satisfaction that comes from it. Yeah. So yeah. technically, somebody's easy difficulty might be hard for them. Yeah. So it's so. still the same concept. It's still the same thing. And the only reason that I get really frustrated with this, and this is actually people close to me that I, you know, I enjoy talking about games with that get get trapped in this void. And I've had this happen twice to me now where I, I have this discussion. And again, I'm not even saying that they must have an easy mode. Um, I'm just saying that the idea that they that like they shouldn't is ridiculous. Because I always say like, because <laughs> like you know what describes a Dark Soulsian game? The difficulty in every time. Because the thing is, I'm talking to people that think that no. It doesn't need an easy difficulty. That's ridiculous. And so I bring up the fact, I'm like, okay, but why is that what is defined as a genre? And then I swear to God, I always get the, well, look, they're not that hard. I mean, once you get this level, it's a super easy game. I mean, it's not that hard. I'm like, oh, okay. Because that's literally how you define it. <laughs> so you it should be defined by the amazing level that's design. That's a bad definition. The amazing. <laughs> it's horrible. And like, and, and, you know, and they try to, and I've even had people tell me, I've even had some people tell me, like, well, you know, what makes a Dark Soulsian is the, uh, the Souls mechanic where, like, I, mm. I don't know Dark Souls that well, but you got the whole Souls mechanic the, and if you lose your soul. you for dying, kind of. Um, yeah, and then you gotta, whole, like, get your stuff That's back. the whole thing about death is part of the gameplay and yes. is part of, like, connecting with the story. But again, yeah. somebody playing it on easy difficulty might die a lot as well, so... Right! So, it, like, it, it's just dumb. Like I said, I'm not saying, like, they must have an easy mode. I'm just saying the reasons that they don't are kind of stupid. Like, uh, <laughs> I've been playing XCOM 2 on easy difficulty, mm-hmm. and I played Mutineer Zero on easy difficulty. You know, when it comes to these tactics games that tend to be a bit harder than your regular old kind of games? Yeah, yeah. Those games on easy mode are okay for me, and but other people yeah. they cannot get past like the first two levels and you know yeah. the, and I won't say like or, oh their their experience undermines yeah, mine no it doesn't I mean look at if do you guys remember I never played it but FTL infamously holy shit it's an, yeah. it, I could not get yeah. past like level three or whatever it is exactly I got through Inf- the final boss once but I never. Uh, Infamously, their supposed easy mode was really, or they even they had something even that was called less than easy mode or something. Or no, they had easy mode than normal mode. You had to get through easy mode, and I didn't know it. I think I knew someone who got through easy mode once. Like I, there's so, a game I love called Dungeon of the Endless, and it only has oh, yeah. easy and easier or easiest. And I've only beaten That's, it on easiest. I cannot get past like the first three levels on easy. Yeah. So technically, it's easy it's, and normal, kind of, or maybe normal and hard. It's I like hard know. and harder. That, <laughs> yeah, they're just... It, it's... I don't know. I Like I said, I'm always a big fan of, like, we need to have more... Dif- like, as much as I want to give Mass Effect 3 a lot of shit, I have to say, at least they had a very wide variety of difficulty levels. Oh, yeah, like, um, it, kind of yeah, obnoxiously I mean, so, but, like, they did. You had one, your... Go ahead. Oh, uh, you had your... Yeah. Sorry. Some <laughs> you had two your, months like, long. <laughs> I'll speak. Uh, you had your, like, narrative mode, which was literally for people who just didn't really like playing the game as much and just wanted to know some more of the story. So, like, that was extremely easy. But then you had the, like, 
what was it called? Like the combat mode is like one of the harder difficulties where basically your choices were chosen for you for most of the part. But like, and I don't know how many people actually use the two different modes, but it was easy to implement and cost nothing. You know, I'm not saying um, every game has to do that, but like, you know. It. Shadow, yeah. what's the latest Tomb Raider game? Some, Shadow of the Tomb Raiders? Oh, uh, whatever. Yeah. So Shadow the game. twice. Tomb Raider dies twice. Uh, so that's, the, that's a James Bond so, film. So the game doesn't feel is it wasn't a game that I enjoyed that much. I enjoyed the previous two games, but one thing cool that they did was um, I vaguely remember it. They had a difficulty mode, but you choose from three different options, and you can choose the difficulty for these three options, and you can kind of customize your own experience in that way. Oh. So That's I like cool. games that does that. Uh, Celeste is another game that has really yes. cool mm. uh, difficulty options. Like you can choose if you oh, okay. can't die, which is like, you know, just the ultimate Super easy mode. Easy, yeah. But then you can have, like you know, other things as well. So I love it when games do that. They really put into That's consideration cool, yeah. Uh, yeah. a lot of mm. different even, types um, of people I- into their design. Yeah, even I didn't play it. You guys did, but I, I just knew about it because I watched my brother play it. Nier Automata had a similar thing. Like if you equipped um, oh, yeah. certain things for for your character like something like that. just really automatic cool. yeah 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 uh one thing you about can RPGs you can unequip general... stuff like not seeing the hud and all that i believe yeah, yeah. i got rid of some useless hud elements i didn't care about mm. make room for more health and whatever uh, yeah. but like one thing about rpgs and i think dark souls like literal dark souls games do this very well is they kind of have a built-in easy mode this isn't a substitution for an easy mode by any means, but mm-hmm. the, the you can make things easier for yourself by grinding. If something's too hard, you grind and it becomes easier. Mm. That for is the true. Most part. For the most part. <laughs> it's not going to yeah. help everybody I have at no all. Idea, I have no idea if Sekiro is the same. It might not have leveling system yeah. is what I've been hearing. It does I'm trying to remember. It's got skills uh, okay. tree. Yeah, it's got but, skills tree. You, you have to, so what what yeah. actually happens, it's kind of annoying because they don't really have the blood spots anymore where, like, if you died, you went and grabbed your stuff. When you mm-hmm. die, actually, um, Sekiro is pretty brutal. I actually do not agree worse, with this harder. system, but it is, well, in some ways, it was kind of my thought of, like, wow, the makers of this game know their audience and want to know how far <laughs> they can push this. Because this is, I, I'm not joking, this is what happens. Um, I know you, happens. I'll, try, I'll try to explain it the best I can because there's, there's a couple complicated systems at play. The first thing you need to know is that whenever you die, there's no blood spot. You don't gain anything back. Um, You lose half your money that you have. You basically get, like, you earn experience to get an experience point, and you need X amount of points to level up to get your skills, you know, get your skills tree and stuff like that. But your health and all that that doesn't go up, right? Yeah. When you get a skill point, like, when you level up to get a skill point, you you keep the skill points no matter what. So let's say you had two skill points, you die, you still have two skill points. But if you had been leveling up, no matter how close or how far you are from getting a skill point, you lose all of it when you die. So you can't... There's a percentage chance you lose everything. Well, that's, oh, that, yeah. that's what I'm about to get to. Okay, okay, there's a okay, percentage okay. Ch- Yeah, yeah. There's a percentage chance, however, that you, that doesn't happen. But it's the like slow, right? Time, it's like 10% or something? Yeah. It, every like, it time you like die... 30, I think. It, oh, okay. Yeah, but every time you die, it decreases. Yeah. Here's the other thing. But as you die more, you lose more. As you, There's actually an even worse thing that even happens, which, again, I thought they were ballsy for including this, and I, I think it's actually kind of funny. I will n- probably never want to play the game because of this, but it's pretty <laughs> ballsy. Um, so when you die too much, nothing. That's, oh, that, yeah. that's what happens to you. Your the NPCs that can give you missions, like side missions, start to get this thing in-game called, like, Dragon Rot or something, and they can actually die giving you, like, the, oh, which limits you access to certain quests. There might be, my brother was saying that there might be a way to cure. I don't know. So there might be. Don't don't quote me there on that. To, I mean, because they've had similar systems in Dark Souls before, mm. where if you die, you go hollow. And so NPCs will interact with you differently if you're hollow or human. And use items yeah. that can restore humanity and that kind of thing. Yeah, but this is like, they will actually, they actually start dying because yeah, you're crazy. dying. <laughs> and so, they, again, if you die too, like, I think my brother has already had an NPC that just died. Like, and there's nothing. <laughs> just dead. Can't get those These side quests. These are the things. Scumbag. These are the things that should define the genre. Not the yeah, difficulties. That, yeah, exactly. The crazy cool mechanics you know? around the, right? the whole dying like, thing. And again, I kind of had to be like, listen, I'm probably never going to play it because that's way too much anxiety and I don't like missing yep. out on content unnecessarily. Yep. But damn, that is ballsy and I can kind of appreciate the fact that they're like, how far do you guys want to go for a challenge? Like, <laughs> I got to give them credit. <laughs> It's definitely an interesting mechanic, just one that I am not like into, you know. But I think it's interesting for those who are. 
Totally. So yeah. But yeah, like that's that's what define, and even like that's something that I don't think having you know again I'm not gonna tell my nuts to have an easy mode, but like why not though? You know why not for those people who truly yep. don't want to miss out? You know what I mean? Like hmm. what does that hurt anything? The you know? vision if, or something. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> you know, but like. It's just kind of silly, you know, like, who who cares what, you know, would you rather have them look it up somewhere? Like, would you rather have them go on a Let's Play YouTube to, to see it? Like, truly. Back in my because, day, we had cheat codes. <laughs> right. But, like, that's kind of what you're kind of saying. Like, some people just aren't going to be able to get that far, you know? And it's like, yep. because it punishes, I mean, the problem with Sekiro is, of course, with that system, you, you know, because the whole idea with most games is you get more experience, you know, figuratively when you die because you learn more things. But this punishes that. A, so... a lot of the argument is they basically say uh, there are a lot of things for different kind of people. Not everything is for everyone. Yeah, that's fine. But the, the but... thing is, I don't actually believe that they actually feel that way. I think yeah. they're okay with that because they're okay at these games. And when they find a game that they are not good at but they want to play, they probably will, you know, change sides. Yeah. So is, I, is I the whole being you. is the whole having something exclusive to you makes you feel yes having exclusive making you feel elite yeah, right you know just, just so like weird feeling, it's just kind of, it's just dumb you know i i just think like i said i'm not gonna say you know we need to put a law down for an easy mode i'm just saying that every excuse i've heard against it is just doesn't fly with me <laughs> i think it's the same like um it's probably the same feeling as signals brain signals whatever when people play competitive multiplayer game and being really good at it Mm-hmm. I mean, that, yeah. there's a type of competition in this. It's just that it's in a single player game, and the competition is quite yeah. meta, like outside the game. I guess. Oh yeah, the, exactly. You want to be, you want to, you want to have that gold star that you did it. You know that you were able to do it, and then that's why when like when people are like, "What's well, not that hard?" I'm like, "You are screaming because you are saying this is one of the hardest games, and you're proud of it." Like, don't. And I'm, I'm not saying that it's the hardest game. I, I'm not, but like. I have seen the frustration, and I'm not interested. <laughs> the hardest game, really? Have you guys played Lion King, motherfuckers? <laughs> <laughs> no, that shit was hard. Oh lordy! Did you play? Did you try to fight? Back Sons? in my day. <laughs> Back in my day. Yeah, it's just it's whatever. People, people just get because it is a, it's a difficult game, and I think the main reason I don't like it is the reason I really don't want to try it is like the the punishment for losing is just too high. I'm not into that. Yeah. Well, I don't <laughs> I play roguelikes. It's... Yeah, do you do yeah, you know how exactly. much I load my fucking XCOM af- before every wow. turn, after every turn, whatever? Yeah, yeah. So much loading, yeah. man. But fuck it. I should play we should play Dark Souls in a virtual machine. That way if you ever die, you can just restore the image of the machine and save scum oh that way. Oh my gosh, that'd be so funny. But yeah, it's just I've considered playing Dark Souls just because it actually has a dodge mechanic, and I like dodge mechanics. It has the um, best dodge mechanic, I think, of any RPG I've ever played. I haven't played yeah. DMC games. And those are also so that's the only software. reason I'm interested in it, because it's really hard to find games with good dodge mechanics. Yeah, um, freaking but Zelda. I just Yeah, but I just haven't, I don't know, I'm just, I will know, I just know myself. I don't have enough patience to just deal with the fact that, oh, I died and I'm going to have to find my stuff. Uh Uh-oh, I lost my stuff again. Like, it's just, all right. (laughs) It's just exhausting. I feel like one of them would be good for you. Either Dark Souls 1 or 2. 1 or 3. No, I heard 2 was kind of, I heard either 1 or 3. I thought 2 was uh, because of the story and atmosphere, kind of, not the gameplay. Two is two. also just hard because there's yes. limited, uh. limited um, enemies, so like you can't grind. So that, I, you, That's you I can heard. grind enough. It, you're right. The, so basically, if you kill an enemy twelve times, they stop respawning. That's but a specific number. Times, it is a very weird number. Twelve times is a lot, and it also makes things kind of easier sometimes because you can clear the path to a boss, so it makes mm. your boss runs a little smoother. Okay, That's fair. But That's I, fair. I mean, it's definitely my least favorite of. One, two, and three. One and three. That's are what I've better. heard. Is it's yeah. But you might be more one's, more beginner friendly. I don't know. Yeah, one one's janky, but you know it, it is what it is. And three, I think, is like the smoothest as far as gameplay. I don't Probably. know about easiness. Um, I would considered yeah. was it Blood Rain the one in Bloodborne. between Bloodborne. Bloodborne. I considered Bloodborne because it was faster paced. Um, this shit is scary, I, man. I played a, bo- a bit of it. Yeah, I'm hoping to are... continue playing it. But then you like, you're in this weird place and there's this big giant werewolf. Oh, fucking hell. 
It was scary. <laughs> Dark Souls has hints of that. Bloodborne is just all that. Son of a bitch. Yeah. Uh, but I heard that it's like, I faster like pace it, and stuff yeah. as well. And it's yeah. more offensive like or something. It's yeah, I think offensive. so too. It's just, yeah. And Sekiro, I've heard, is like, you have to parry all the time, is kind of what I've yeah, heard. Yeah, it's very skill-based. <laughs> yeah, it's all. Very I never skill- parry yeah. in Dark Souls. I always dodge. I know, and you, get, and you gotta learn to parry, because apparently the yeah. dodge isn't very good That's in how Sekiro. That's how Samurai's fight. There is yeah, a jump in Sekiro, though, which is interesting, because you can mm. jump yes. over certain attacks. That's cool. Yes. Or even yes. jump to lead into other attacks. You also are like Batman. You have like a grappling hook. It's mm. kind of weird. <laughs> oh, yeah, I saw that. It's more like a... Oh, what's the... Is it like the Cyber Ninja games. What were those games? Uh, you had like the claw grappling hook for a hand. Bionic Commando? That's what I'm thinking. Oh, okay. Thank you. Bionic Commando. <laughs> no oh, ninja wow, in that, okay. man. No that ninja. Was, oh, damn. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of ninja-like. Kind of, yeah. Okay, I see it, yeah. Commandos, ninjas, yeah. they're all things. But yeah. <laughs> anyway, I'm, I'm not playing Sekiro for sure. Like, it's just not, yeah, I don't intend not to. at all a kind of game I would want to play. Um, maybe someday, like, because I did try to do Dark Souls 1 some time ago at the behest of my brother. Um, apparently, I did okay, but I, <laughs> I stopped. Be- actually, the main reason I stopped was because uh, my computer, my laptop at the time wasn't running it very well because I was, during the mm. time I was getting Windows 10, and for whatever reason, Dark Souls on Steam did not run with Windows 10 for the longest time. Now I think they patched it, but <laughs> then I got a new computer and I just never download it again. I think I sometimes will, but like again, you know, I can't, I'm not, there's so many games. The there's so mode. little time. There's so many games, you know. Yeah. And it's just the kind of game that I think, like again, maybe I'll play one of them and be like, I did it. By you the know, time you finish one of the Dark Souls, you can finish like three other games. The stories, they're, they're, yeah, uh, yeah, they're so memorable. I don't know though. There's a lot. You definitely, it's like reading a good book where you're kind of said it's over by the end because it's just, it's a, it's an experience. It is an experience. I, I definitely can see that. And their storytelling, I love the subtlety of everything, I will say. Yeah. Um, the fact that, like, the storytelling through the items and stuff, they're really cool with that, you know. Um, and that's kind of what I think needs to be focused on more than, like, it's Those you know, are the difficulty, defining elements. not difficulty. Yeah. And not you not know, the difficulty. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's the stuff that I wish the stupid Soulsian tryhards would focus on more. Because that's what makes it, that's like what you need to tell people to make it interesting, you know? Not be all, or just, I don't know, like all the, the characters and like what you're doing. And even just some of the choices that you can make that you don't realize are choices. That yeah, like, yeah, oh, you really screwed yourself. Like that's really interesting, you know, it's fluid and stuff like that. Um they understand so. that when people are asking for difficulty choices, that they can choose the hardest one, right? Right. <laughs> right. Like, like you, you know, you, you can think. do that, right? I mean, it's yeah. You can just. They're like, not saying make the game easier. No, they're saying no. Uh, if the developers spend time on easy mode, they spend less time making the game good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, people. But yeah, I mean, it's honestly, true. they and might just... just be bad at it. They might not be. <laughs> they might not Maybe. actually know how to do it. To be fair, that Maybe. might be that. Yeah, uh, yeah. I just, it, it's just dumb. Like, just why not? It doesn't hurt you. I also think we really need to get away from like shaming people who do easy mode. I think that's where a lot of this comes from. Oh yeah. Um, there's a lot of there's really a lot of shame in the gaming community of doing easy mode anything, and we why, really need to why stop are that. games about achieving anything? Interestingly, I'm surprised these same people who don't want easy mode are actually for easy mode, so then they'd have the opportunity to shame people. Right? These I don't know. These are the kind of people who'd really go for that. You'd think, but people are weird, though. Mm. That's <laughs> um, true. It's true. But, like, but yeah, you know, I, I just wish we could stop doing that because I remember, dude, trying to play Dragon Age Origins, trying to get through that game, like, later mm. in life. So I yeah, could try I to get fucking through it. Turned, and, like, I, f- I turned off Friendly Fire. Fuck that shit. Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. No friendly fire. I'm gonna um, AOE I have everything. to go easy mode. I just you know, like or even when I played um when I played Fire Emblem Awakening the first time, it was my first Fire Emblem game. Those and are they hard. finally mm. included an option where your characters didn't perma die. Oh, yeah. And I did it. Oh, and you know what? Nice. If the I if the really, Switch one has that, I'll play it. Yeah, it, it probably will. But it's gotten I mean, the last Fire Emblem games have. Actually, what about the one that the uh, came Emblem- out like three of them at the same time? Buff ride something. Yes, they did. Actually, incest, they had whatever. an even. They had another easier mode. Um, oh. the the ones with the three. They, were people um, pissed I, off I about it? Them. I think they were because it, it's dumb. Because you don't have to. I didn't choose it. I just chose the normal like um, non permadeath, meaning like if they die in that, they still can come back. Oh, so you they mean actually, there's a non permadeath, but there's also like easier battles and stuff. 
So what it? I so see. here's how Fire Emblem. So Fire Emblem Awakening, they had I think like three difficulties, like you know, easy, medium, hard, or whatever, and easy, normal, hard, I think. And then they had the permadeath option, or they come back even if they die in the battle. But the newer, the ones with the three that came out, the birth, birthright, whatever, they had those. But then they had another mode called, I think it was called like Phoenix Feather or something. I didn't actually pick mm-hmm. it because it's even easier mode. What it is is if you have any units that like die in the battle, they come back the next round. Next, you mean mm. like next turn, like straight away in yes. combat? Yeah. Yeah. Like less health or something. Mm. I'm Maybe I don't know. I didn't pick it because I was like, I don't see the point. Like I'm okay with you know if they just die, you know. I I thought that was interesting. They had an even easier mode. Not against it. Maybe that's how some people want to play. Maybe it's for you kids. You know, one good thing. Well, one good thing about it that some for some people is that way you don't have to worry about losing out an experience for a player, mm. uh, for one of your characters. Yeah. Oh. That way, if you're like, I, I want to no so matter simple. what, make sure that this character can get experience in this battle, you would probably want that on so they could get through. Um, that's one good thing about it. I, di- I did see that when Fire Emblem Awakening came out, some people were really pissed about the easier mode, but some people who were into the game actually really liked it because it changed the strategy of the game. Because, like, in the old game, like, you didn't really want anyone to die if you could, you know, afford it. But with the easier mode, you could do things like, all right, put the weak guy, you know, they're going to die. Yeah. Mm. And so they could, they were like, yeah, you could do a whole different kind of strategy. So, which is, I didn't even think about it, but, like, it's true. And even the same with this. Like, if you really wanted to make sure this person was going to level up and make it through, you might want this on, you know? So, you know, it's, whatever. Also, another thing about, I wish that they actually... So, you know how some games have so many different options and some games are just like easy, normal, hard? I wish they yeah, would yeah. at least describe um, mm, normal is like... Different. so, And also like normal, this is what the game developers intended the game to be. I want to have that, yeah. uh, this is what game developers intended the game to be in one of the modes. So like yeah. people who wants to play it that way can choose to play it that way. Yeah. I've seen that in a few I games. I wish it's done more. They do. Yeah, I yeah, it's true. A lot of games, yeah, I do see in some games, some of the more RPG ones, I feel like I see it. I feel like RPGs say, like, easy mode is for people who are not familiar with RPGs. And also, and normals for people, a lot yeah. of the fucking difficulty <laughs> mode is what? Increasing health and increasing enemy damage. Yeah, That's just a... Uh, yeah. yeah. What, it's just number This crunching. is a lot more work, but what you want is, like, a different AI. Scaling. Yeah, different AI. Yeah. Yes. That's yes. a lot more And work. sometimes, <laughs> sometimes they do, like, in Mass Effect, it is different AI sure. scaling. That's true. Um, with it, the, the, they also do the number crunching but i think it is like the ai is more accurate and stuff like that and stealth games i feel like they also have things like that where they're more able to they they might have Mm. wider range of view or something like that so um but you're right like that's what it should be like which is harder admittedly but but yeah especially even even if you like hard mode just saying oh it's double hp on enemies that's not interestingly harder no Mm. it's not at all i agree it's It's really not it's like it's very yeah, artificial. Yeah, just, exactly. Yeah. So, which is why, like, with, with Fire Emblem, it's kind of cool, because they do have, like, their different, you know, modes, which I think the only thing that's different is, like, um, I think the AI behaves a little differently between the modes. I'd have to look it up. I think the other difference is just, um, I think it might be double health, though. Or, no, I think, you know what it is? I think the luck stats of, like, all the enemies is, like, super high, so they get more crits on you, basically. <laughs> Huh. Um, I think that's Great. the other thing, which is just like. Ooh. So yeah, yeah. That's the kind of problem with with Smash Brothers right now is the harder things are just more obnoxious combinations, which is interesting, but they're also sometimes unfair feeling. So it's a, I don't know yeah. which way I feel about that. I get that. Uh, so that's that's our thing on that. <laughs> give a story. Yes, a couple more. I already mentioned the Borderlands 3 being an Epic Games exclusive yes. for six months. Right. There are a couple yep. more Epic Games stuff. Um, the oh the, the current free game for the current two weeks is The Witness, that first-person difficult puzzle game by Jonathan Blow, Braid. the guy who made Braid. <laughs> um, yeah. So you, Wait, made Braid? That the one that made yeah. Braid, yeah. Oh, the super obnoxious yeah. guy? Oh my yeah. lord, I didn't know he made another I mean, game. Braid's a yeah. good game. It and is the a witness, good game. And I heard the, the witness was also really good. Yep. Mm. He's talented. I'll give him that. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
the next two weeks after the witness will be Transistor, the game by um, oh, Super yeah. Super Giant. Oh, Bastion. Love, yes. Super Giant. Yeah. Oh, oh. I still haven't, okay, I still haven't played their their sports RPG thing game. Yeah, that one. I've heard good things about I've heard it. I've good but things I don't about know it. Yeah, so. for me. Mm. I'll need to get it. I've seen it lowest at sixty percent off, which is a good price. Okay. And they're a good developers, so I don't mind giving them money, money anyways. That is true. It's a, not a high risk, and even yeah. if you're wrong, you feel good about it. <laughs> and they do have an an early access game out on Epic Games right now, which so they oh uh, yeah, and it's probably gonna come on Steam once it's uh, out of early access. Uh, there are actually a couple of things that I read about Epic Games and people's experiences with them. So yeah. there's this guy. Uh, is, this is just uh, anecdotal stories on Reddit. So I didn't look into how true they are but i've okay. but i've heard about how creating an account on epic games doesn't actually give you a email notification not notification uh you know how you had to verify your email kind of thing they will send you yes. a link or whatever yeah mm. yeah yeah apparently epic games doesn't do that or do that sometimes is what i've heard <laughs> so i did hear something about it was off yeah i don't remember what it was though so um this guy who just is getting back into PC gaming doesn't really know about Steam or Epic Games or whatever, according to him, created an account <laughs> on Epic Games because he wanted to play The Division 2. And other than you play, it's exclusive on Epic Games, not on Steam. Okay. Uh, so he created an account. He's Canadian. He accidentally put the wrong domain at the, the, the top level domain. So instead of a dot com he put a dot ca i believe something like oh, that okay. interesting. Uh-huh. so he, number one he didn't get any email notification uh the confirmation thing he bought yeah. the division two at 60 bucks and he was allowed to buy it and everything <laughs> but then when he wants to log into epic games on the desktop software it requires yeah. an email thing and the email goes to the wrong email and he doesn't have access to that email because it's a wrong, you know, top-level domain. And oh, no. yeah. What's Epic Games' return policy? No, there is none, right? There are return policy no, which they just come up with a few weeks ago, maybe. Uh, it's basically about the same as Steam. I think like 14 days and maybe there's okay. a limited number of hours you have to play. Okay. So and you could return it and make a new account with the right email. So I he's guess. been That's trying. He's been trying. He's tried. He tried to return it five times, and because of the oh. whole email problem, because they keep sending like emails to him that he can't get access to. Yeah. And I think eventually he found a way, but because it's past the fourteen days, he can't get his refund. So. Oh jeez. Yeah. What a weird oversight. So like I've never when, heard. So of if that. you go to your credit card, yeah. you know how you can do like the chargeback on your credit card. Hey, I didn't get my thing. Yes. So oh, you yeah. you yeah, you yeah. you'll get banned. You'll get banned on the storefront. <laughs> so that's the only way to do it. He might he might just not do anything on Epic Games anymore. <laughs> just get a you play or something, man. Yes, so there's that. So. There's another case. Uh-huh. Um, so I've been hearing a lot of stories about people's Epic Games accounts getting hacked. I'm not sure mm. why it's so easy to get hacked. I'm pretty sure they have the <gasps> money for good security and they might have good security. So it might just be people with really bad passwords. Or I believe Maybe, it yeah. also could be tied to... There was one time there was a big like data breach on Epic Games and a bunch of people's passwords and accounts were compromised. But a lot of people they don't play anything else except Fortnite. And they might, you know, not... You might not play it for a while and you don't know, didn't know what was happening. So I believe th- right. this was the case where he was playing a lot of Fortnite and he doesn't... Mm. He didn't know what happened and stuff. He got a few thousand euros. Somebody was using his account to get money out. Hmm. Yeah, that's. I think I did hear fall. about that they had a major breach. Yeah, um, I think they Fortnite. had a major breach, like 2017, maybe 2018. I thought it was, or I thought I heard about it like last like six months, but I, I could be wrong. I don't know, but maybe I just last six months it. is still 2018, yeah. so it could oh, be like right. last year or two years ago, maybe. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, so, yeah, it was. Um, yeah, Epic Games just is. It's just strange. Like I'm, you know, it, they just some of like the weird things that like. 
Like, yeah, send an email to make sure that you got the right account. Like, just simple stuff like yeah, that. They, yeah. Do, do they still not have, like, a message board stuff that's coming nah. up? I heard that <laughs> yeah, was, like, like, forums type things. Yeah, like, it's just um, very simple things. So, like, I I personally don't care about people using my data because I've, I use so many services that do that already. The thing is, I'm very hesitant on putting my payment information into Epic Games and buying anything. Mm. That's the one thing. Yeah, I haven't I, I haven't bought anything before on the platform. Uh, and I'm just yeah, wondering I'm just now, like, right do now. people who use Unreal, because I believe you need to also download the Epic, used to be like the Epic Launcher or something, to launch certain games and the Unreal Engine. And you probably mm. only can access the Unreal Asset Store using their service so i'm I'm just wondering if it's the same like system and is it going to be compromised as well quite a lot of people use the unreal engine hobbyists and developers that'd be like like ips getting stolen that would be sad yeah so i hope not i'm just wondering so i'm very hesitant on putting my payment information until more information comes out until it's more matured for now i'm just like just grabbing the free games pretty much yeah just (laughs) yeah I, i don't blame you so yeah I know I'm not playing Borderlands 3 on launch, that's for sure. Yeah, right. <laughs> Another interesting like side footnote to the story is that um surprise surprise, gamer people are review bombing Borderlands 2 oh, yeah, on that's true. Steam. But so the interesting point of that story is that uh until now Steam would be like, yeah, we've got software that's going to stop review bombs and clearly it's not working. Mm. Oh, it's not working. Interesting. Um, the review or bombs maybe it hasn't are been I don't, yeah, I don't know. I don't agree with review bombs, but there was somebody I saw a counterpoint to this where they basically said uh, review bombing is the only way consumers can actually have a voice. Like they have no direct <laughs> communication with anybody, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, kind of true. Yeah, doesn't, kinda, oh, that justifies just, it. Yeah. It's a, I just I just have found it does more harm than good. You also get your voice across when you, you know. So instead of like do any violent action. So I'm not saying review bombing is good, but they probably need better communication. Like some kind of I mean, access or something. Maybe. Mm. I I think I think the only thing I sometimes feel about that is like I mean obviously if a game is poor or is bad coding or something you want to get that heard but like the problem too is I think some people review bomb because the game's not to their special way right. and, and you I think leave like accurate reviews. Yeah. Yeah, and I think there's a thing to be said that like you know consumers of course consume games they'll play what they want to play but like a developer is does not have to cater to your needs you know to what everybody uh-huh, wants. so like, no easy difficulty they <laughs> uh, <laughs> don't have to she never said they have to <laughs> they ever have to it's just you know i mean it's like any art if right you like money. you don't have to it's just you know if everyone's okay, shouting so, for one thing you're doing the exact opposite uh i think it's working so that the whole steam trying to so what what it is, is you can see the reviews that are tied to the review bomb, but it doesn't affect the overall score under recent That's reviews and su- all reviews. So right now I'm on the Borderlands yeah. 2 page. Oh. Mm. All reviews... Okay, hard yeah. to tell. So all reviews are still overwhelmingly positive with 92k, and oh, recent reviews okay. is still very positive at 1,000, and there are asterisks on both. Saying this product I has see. experienced one or more per- uh, one or more periods of off-topic review activity, blah 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 blah. Okay, uh, so it did work. The reviews within these periods have been excluded okay. from this product's review score. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, because I know part of what they were going to do, and I don't know if they did this part yet, that I thought was a little shady, but I, I understood. Um, after something they've decided has been review bombed, they actually were part of the deal was that developers got to delete any reviews that they thought <laughs> were <laughs> not fair, basically, which is a little. Uh, but I mean, review bombs are review bomb, so um, I, I don't know if maybe they haven't done that part yet, but it sounds like it is working then. Mm. Okay. I mean, hey, that's how it's supposed to work. The system just detects like weird... Uh, Influxes. They, they probably just detect really uh, negative reviews. So like in the past three yeah. days, there have been this huge If you haven't amount. played the game recently, just leave a review randomly. I'm not sure if it's manual or algorithm. It'd be interesting if it's. I think it's, it's got to be it's, an algorithm. When I heard it was, I heard when I looked into it, it was algorithm. But then it was basically like a red flag, and supposedly a 
worker for Steam would look into it, basically oh. use their human judgment, and then I go mean, from if there. If it is manual, that might explain why I didn't think it was working earlier, because it just took them a while to process I That's what I was wondering. I think it just might have taken some time to process. Um, but that's when I read about it, they said that's supposedly how it's supposed to work, was it would basically send a red flag to whoever's in charge of this. Mm. They would investigate, and I mean... A review bomb is really easy to figure out, right? It doesn't yeah, really take that much probably. time. So using, I mean, I mean, <clears throat> if they do use real people, props to them because at least they're doing something better than YouTube's doing. So, mm. <gasps> so yeah. Um. But why are people? Re- I'm sorry, I missed this part. Maybe this was obvious. Why are people review bombing? Borderlands 2 on Steam. Because Borderlands because 3 you can't is... can't review bombs Borderlands 3. Yeah. And it's only on the Epic Game Store. Uh, they did that. this with another game that was, became exclusive, right? Uh, so, uh, the Metro Metro Games. The Metro Exodus, the latest one, was announced as exclusive on Epic Games. that's gonna help how? I don't know. <laughs> it's the only way it's, we have a Oh, no, oh, we're yeah. mixed. It's not gonna be on Steam. Let's make their other games seem like they suck on Steam. What? Punish them financially. People no one's gonna buy Borderlands so... 2 because you know people are just buying it like hotcakes these days. Jesus, people are weird. The reason why I'm not buying Borderlands 3 is because there's just so many conflicting information and stories about, hey, Epic Games is totally fine security wise. No, actually, it's not. It's just it's fucking it's fucking scares even... me, man. Yeah, I mean, also I don't even know how optimistic I'm about Borderlands 3 being good. Like two is good, obviously. Three sequels bad. I I'm I don't kind know. of it's worried so about the hype. Yeah, mm. exactly. I, uh, Borderlands I, 2 was I, amazing. I Still it. one of the best games I've ever played. It's certainly one of my most played games. And honestly, and you can see sort of like Borderlands 1, they had like, what, four expansion packs and that's it. And you can buy a really mm-hmm. cheap game of the year edition. And then Borderlands 2 started going crazy a little bit. And then I'm going to guess Borderlands 3 is going to be even crazier. And I'm not really looking forward to that. Borderlands 3 is going to have a lot of DLC, because Borderlands 2 had some crazy dumb DLC stuff. Like, for $4, you can unlock a head skin. Yeah, Borderlands 2 has a lot of that. But at least they they still had, like, you know, those huge expansions with, like, you know, characters and stuff. But I'm just worried about Borderlands 3. they had some real good extra DLC. Honestly, I'm just really worried about Borderlands 3 DLC practices. Fuck, they might even just have loot boxes with, like, random crazy weapons in it. I mean, they do have... Borderlands 2 does have that, like, golden key system. Yeah, that golden key. like, promotional. Yeah. But it absolutely could be abused with microtransactions. Yeah, I'm just really worried, honestly. And people forget that, yes, it's made by Gearbox, but 2K owns Gearbox. <laughs> 2K? Anybody? NBA 2K? WWE? Oh. <laughs> it's 2K, for fuck's sakes. Uh, shit. We'll see. Um, and it's probably a good... It's probably good to wait to see like what kind of season pass and like what kind of like DLC stuff will come about anyways. And it's it's not really a game yeah. that you need to play now. Yeah. It's a game that, you know, like Borderlands 2, you can keep going back to it. Uh, yep. Small thing, Nintendo VR is a thing. You can play Mario Odyssey oh. and... Um, what's this other game? Breath of the Wild when the Nintendo, <laughs> with the Nintendo Labo VR. Oh. Which is cool. Um, yeah. So the other big thing is the Bioware expose. Yes, I wrote parts of that. Uh, Kotaku did. Oh, right. By the way, Kotaku is fi- is like does their stupid clickbait, but then does really good exposes oh, on Bio- complex <laughs> game video <laughs> no, game Bio- companies. Kotaku is re- has really good um, actual journalism. Yes. Like, cause there's like there's like three Which journalists. Which was not true like two years ago. No, it they, might be true two years ago, but it's. But this kind of journalistic kind of stories is so rare because it's such a huge piece. You need yeah. to get so much information, and then the clickbait it just surrounds everything else. So, like, yeah. that's true. And there's like th- they have like three specific writers that do them. Yeah, that's true. So it's not the whole staff. It's like top, so I think top, that's top, top guys. Yeah, so that's probably why. Yeah, but it wasn't it. By- I thought they did an expose with Anthem. Uh, yes. Yeah, Bioware Anthem. This is the one. Oh, okay. Sorry, I thought you said that's not what it was. Sorry. Yeah, that. Like, who? They, they were also the people that uh, did the expose with the Riot Games and uh, you know shoving the penis in the face stuff mm-hmm. and farting in people's oh, faces. Yeah. Was they did. Yeah. Yep. They did a whole thing the whole about sexual it. thing. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, they Bioware kind of doesn't treat their it. devs right. Who would have thunk? Well, uh, e- like yeah, EA doesn't in general. Basically, yeah. Who to thunk? It would be weird if the game 
if game companies don't do that, I guess, from the amount of people, just just <laughs> it would be abnormal. Yeah, <sighs> freaking unionized. I get treated anyway. well. I work only eight hours, <laughs> yeah. and I have you know. Yeah, I know. But yeah, no. I'm that, more um, curious about like how like bad games get made. Just like the too many cooks kind of thing. Like who, like why, like how many people were aware the game was gonna suck, but just didn't have the power to change anything and that kind of stuff. That's fascinating to me. I yeah, and that's kind of that's kind of bit what it sounds like with the anthem uh, expose. The main thing seemed to be was that there were so many last minute changes that mm-hmm. like that's why the game was just so cobbled together because no one really knew what was like the title of the game got changed last minute. <laughs> um, like, like no one actually knew. I guess it was some, that, originally supposed to be called Beyond, which is yeah, very Beyond, vague, yeah. but I guess has a vision to it. Yeah, apparently the name fits like what they were trying to do. Yeah, that which reminds is okay. me of uh, the movie that came out last year called Snowman. It's like a murder mystery movie. They didn't know until like a few months before they like started post production or started shooting that pre production that um the main character's name was Harry Hole. <laughs> It's not. It's not a porno. His name's just Harry Hole, and people didn't know Jesus. that. Like it was. They like we did, we got to his name. We don't know his name. The main character's name. We don't know it yet. <laughs> like okay, we'll go with Harry Hole. People are like oh Yikes. shoot, I'm already signed up to this piece of crap. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> Jesus. But yeah, so the last minute they changed uh, the name Beyond because they last minute found out they. I don't know if they actually asked or they just assumed that they wouldn't be able to trademark it very well. No, which I think they probably. I could see. Th- uh, he has uh, like an army of lawyers. They probably tried to work with it, but just couldn't. And then last minute, they were like, God, yeah. guys, we can get I mean, it. Which I mean is, yeah, which is <laughs> kind of fair, <laughs> I would say. Um, but like, uh, but but they, but basically it was very last minute it was discovered. So like when it was first basically announced was when a lot of people, when a lot of the developers found out like, oh, it's Anthem now. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, that and I guess the not, game. It's not a super better name either. Yeah, it's really not. Um. And also, I can't. I'm, I, I'm surprised they were able to get away with that name anyway. Mm. Um, I mean, they had Halo. Halo's a pretty general name anyway. I guess but anyway. one random word is not as bad a name as three random words, like Horizon Zero Dawn. <laughs> Square Square Enix is like the king, the king of that. They're pretty fucking good yeah. at that. Dartboard okay. name making. Kingdom oh my Hearts Lord, right? Dream Drop <laughs> Distance the or something. Yeah. 2.8.5. Birth 5. by sleep. What? Um, yeah, 2.5. Um, yeah, but it's so, so and also I guess, the, I I think if you have the expose up, you can speak more on this, um, Char. But I, there, it just, there were so many changes last minute. Nobody really knew what mm. was going to look like. Uh, people hated and, working um, on the Frostbite engine, which people is... Hated, Oh, yeah, yes. that was the big thing, was the Frostbite yeah. engine. That which was the big part. Which is a propriety engine. Yeah. Thing, but it's EA. impossible. Mm. Yeah, so I I don't well, I don't know the full details of the frostbite engine, but I'm, I think it was that somebody like, said about they were like uh, they... working with a frostbite engine is like working with a bunch of razor blades or something or something like that, which is fucking oh. like yikes. It's just really bad. well. The problem was the people so like frostbite engine is made by which company? Uh, uh, EA. It was, it was like Avalanche. Okay, so I Avalanche think. makes frostbite. Yeah, so it, yeah, they so just cost it's, guys. It's, it's like an it's like an. It's like an in-house engine. In-house I mean, engine, it's yeah. not going to be as good as some massive like production engine. But because the people actually using the engine are Bioware, not Avalanche, it's all the disadvantages of not having oh. an in-house engine. So it's both disadvantages. Mm. <laughs> like Eek. it's not as good, oh, and see. you don't have the actual uh, source code or documentation to change. I believe it easily. the Battlefield games Yikes. also use Frostbite, but uh, Frostbite was mm. cr- was created by the Avalanche guys that makes that. I'm just like. Off the top of my head, I might be wrong. Uh, they make the Just Cause games. Mm. Okay. Mm. So, that's, yeah. yeah. That sucks. Mm. <laughs> because if you have Yikes. your own in-house engine, you don't have to pay fees. Yeah. Mm. But uh, it also wasn't yeah, like helps. theirs Yeah, to because Unreal with. and Unity have fees once you hit like certain amounts. So, because both are free and they got to make their money back somehow. And these guys, right. they're, they're not going to use the asset store or anything. So. Yeah. Yikes! So, unless you, yeah, unless you was... release it exclusively on Epic, don't have to pay no fees, <laughs> and then get your money stolen. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's uh, <laughs> or never have your account in the first place. But yeah, it's just really sad. Yeah, I mean, no vision, no direction. I, last minute Bioware, changes. Yeah. Like Bioware hasn't sorry. been the same. It just hasn't. I was really, and I, love when they were I was t- really mad that Dragon Age Inquisition did as well as it did. I mean, that was back when things were okay, though. Uh, it was it wasn't the same bad? team. St- what? No, it was really was that... good. Okay, I thought the, I thought the game was good. No, it, it was really good. It's... It was good, but it, was it wasn't Dragon Age. 
I, I mean, it was very. It was so it, MMO. It's hard so to say because Dragon Age Two was it seems like more witchery. Yeah, because I mean, all three Dragon Age games are very different from each other. Like I'd say so the that. Mass Effect games are, are pretty similar, but, I'd say but Inquisition Dragon Age is like the biggest, like just yes. just such a huge thing. It's a huge game because Dragon Age One was like playing an old Bioware game. Oh yeah. Um, mm-hmm. p- number two was kind of rushed. And so it was faster paced, but like less Which choices. is also playing like Fewer an old choices. Bioware game. Koto 2, well, I mean, Koto 2 is made by what? It's Obsidian. Obsidian, yeah. A Bioware. It's Bioware. But it kind of has that same parallel. Dragon Age 1 is very Kotori. Oh, very. Yes, it is. So good. Um, Extremely Kotori. And honestly, Dragon Age 2, you know what really reminds me of? Mass Effect. Because I think they were ca- trying okay. to capitalize on the Mass Effect success. So, like, it just really briefly, I the think, reason, like, I think one the, of the biggest that- problem with it is it being called Dragon Age 2 and not Dragon Age something else. Y- you know what I mean? Uh. Yeah, but it's all, they're trying to make it a part of the same story, though, because yeah. Dragon Age 3 wraps it all up. Because um, what, it's, not main- li- uh, it's more linear than, like, Dragon Age 1, right? That's what I remember from it. Yeah, I enjoyed it, is very, it though, yeah, it is linear. It's just more linear yes. and stuff. But yeah, because dra- the thing, like, like Dragon Age 1 is very Kotori because, like, you create completely your own character. Yeah. You don't have a voice, but you get a ton of options of what to say. It's, it's a very full-fledged Kotori, RPG. so some things... Yeah, full-fledged, full choices, that kind of thing. Kotar... Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, <laughs> Dragon Age 2, you basically play either a female or a male of established character. Yeah. So it's Ethan very Hawk. much like mm. Mass Effect. Yeah, it's so you have a you have a last name. You get to change your first name, mm. but you choose your gender, what you look you like. Totally you should totally just name the person Ethan Hawke, though. Do you yeah. have a class, just like Mass Effect? Or you you pick a you class, choose, yeah. just okay. just like Mass Effect. It's very okay. Mass Effect because it's okay. very obvious that they were seeing that Mass Effect did so well that they were, especially number two, did so Which well that no they were sense. trying to capitalize that. Which makes no sense I'm for sorry? the Dragon Age universe. Well, it's just it's two different games. Exactly. So it's just weird. But because so Mass Effect two really... had Mass Effect one. <laughs> you come on, man. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and then so in Dragon Age Inquisition really tried to like keep it both it's, so it's like open world but it's it, also it was got too like world. I would love if it would just go yeah. back to the Dragon Age origins formula yeah it's, it's very open world and it's got a lot of um, grindy elements it's got elements. a little bit more of the RPG elements very MMO they did come they did one thing I do like about it is they did try to keep like Dragon Age One's characterization where like you could pick your your race, mm. you could pick how you looked, um, mm. but they still had voice acting. Um, but I think you got two. Vo- I think there were two voices or something that they used Probably. for each gender. Yeah. I think. Um, so like they kind of so they tried to make it a little bit different and stuff like that, and they had unique backstories. So they they were they had the production value and the budget to do that. So that was pretty cool. Um, but. Yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> oh, uh, one of my favorite mods for XCOM 2 is the voice pack for HK47. The the ro- the yes. ro- oh, that's awesome. Super awesome. That's Whenever I move, they're like, you're pretty, you're pretty smart or something for a meat bag. Oh, I love this. Game. I love amazing. this so much. Oh, I really want to go back. The memories. I really want to go back and play it. Uh, but yeah, but yeah, Bioware. It was nice knowing you. Yeah. I know yeah. you said you were supposedly making another <laughs> Dragon you know what, Age game, but that ain't happening. <laughs> you know what their response to the first like article to uh that their response no, to it? What was it? So they said something like uh we ah uh, shit. Something like what the pr- the press <laughs> and the games industry should work together and not attack each other or something, and then <laughs> something like an official statement. And then they uh, internally they were not talking about the article, but they were just saying sending emails saying don't talk to the press. So those yeah. were the two first like reaction to them, and then like a day after that they were like okay we uh we understand blah 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 about the problems we're gonna talk about it at a all hands meeting like this coming week or something like that <laughs> so t- your problem is t- t- your t- 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 culture yeah <laughs> your problem is your culture guys don't focus on the also oh oh the f- the best part of the article i'm not sure if you saw this char the best part about the expose supposedly so uh, recap you guys know char you will remember this i know fo you didn't play much mass effect but when mass effect andromeda first came out um the graphics were oh pretty bad. my god <laughs> and especially the facial animations they still never really quite got off the ground and there's a side character who famously um became a meme because like her face really didn't move oh. much side character? And oh you mean also, the it, like the lady supervisor character right yeah the lady so, yeah exactly like exactly big boss lady and guy, it became yeah. a meme yeah, it became a meme because she, in the beginning, says, sorry, I'm really, like, my sorry, my face looks tired or something like that. And so, like, they, they basically became a meme because her face wasn't moving when she was saying that. So it was kind of a, people thought it was hilarious, right? So, supposedly, 
the, like, head executives or whatever were so embarrassed by that that what would you think would be the logical, like, conclusion of what they should do to fix this problem? Would it be to maybe make sure your graphics are good? Like, make sure your facial rigging is working right? No, they told their developers to make to make sure that they didn't have what they call it non memeable content. Yeah, <laughs> unmemeable content. What the fuck does that even mean? I have no that idea. That is a non actionable statement. Yes. It means nothing. What do you mean an unmemeable? Any? Do, do you they, know what a memeable I, content do means? They, no. they don't know what a meme is. They don't. It's very. What they were trying to say was, we don't want this to embarrass us, but you make it less embarrassing when you fix your crap. Like, it's just. I when I read that, I was like, oh my gosh, their priorities are so backwards. Like they just don't get it. They don't think, yeah. <laughs> yep. They're treating the symptom. The symptom is is bad press. Like we won't want things that cause bad press. They don't know the underlying reason for the. Yeah. Bad press. Why are they getting bad press? <laughs> exactly. Ugh, uh, it's just the climate of today. If you look at U.S. president, I guess it's the same exact mm-hmm. damn thing. <laughs> All talk. All talk. But yeah, bye, Bioware. Yeah. I'm gonna miss you. Uh, it's a good Bioware article. Go ahead and read it. It's by Jason Schreier. Uh, I'm not really. Yeah. I don't really agree a lot with his opinions. Like there was one time he said something like, um, "I get really anxious for not buying AAA games because so many people are being." Um, uh, what's the word employed by these companies and i'm like what that we should know by now our wallets don't do shit i know <laughs> unfortunately on, like i know yeah. anyways but it's a good article he does good journalistic work um mm-hmm. so go and read that so yeah bioware yeah. god damn it uh i knew this would be their end but yeah. oh, so bittersweet so shit uh, there's, I believe, ex-Bioware developers that branched out for this game called Breach. It's like an action RPG, MMO online kind of thing. Oh, I think I did hmm. hear about that. Yeah, they, they're closing down. Mm, not not Obsidian? It's a different company? No, not Obsidian. It's a, it's a different company okay. that's made up of ex-Bioware developers, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Well, so was Obsidian. That's why I wasn't sure. Oh, yeah. Obsidian was oh, it could be Obsidian. from Bioware people, uh, um, just as an indie company, basically. So I wasn't sure if it was that. I, I think they're still around, yesterday, though. I yesterday, and if I'm not mistaken, it is ex-Bioware, but I'm guessing it could be, like, newer Bioware, not, like, I'm old, sure it's old newer, Bioware. yeah. Obsidian's yeah. old. Like, Obsidian old, was, like, yeah. they broke away when Bioware was doing pretty well. Mm. Um, So they, they... I don't so, know what uh, they broke away from. Yeah, they created this, like, online action RPG type thing. It was an early access. It's still in early access. quite new, but they shut down because mm-hmm. they just, you know, can't sustain. That sucks. Yeah, it's... Horrible, uh, but I hope they find good homes. Uh, if you guys haven't watched uh, Game Informer, they have a YouTube channel, and they like to do this thing where they, whenever a new game is about to come out or like a new game is announced or something, they do rapid fire like hundred questions with the developers, <laughs> and it's just like really funny questions. Like, who do you think? It's, it's just funny. Go and watch it. They did one with like the Outer Worlds guys, and um, there's a new <laughs> one. They did one with the God of War guy. Go ahead and watch that. They have a new video out. Those, those, uh, those Speaking of God of War, they won did Bastos? you see the recent unconfirmed rumor about the new Assassin's Creed? Wait, are we talking God of War? Or it's going to be... Okay. It's because it's going to be Vikings. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, it was a, Vi- there's a poster <laughs> in The Division train. 2 showing a Viking. Ah, is that yeah. that came about. It shows a Viking. So it has a word Valhalla on top. Shows a Viking holding um, one of those apple thingies from the Assassin's Creed universe. What looks like one of those like Apple of Eden or something. I forgot what it's called. That would be cool. Yeah, that would be cool. I just don't want it to like suffer under the shadow of uh, God of War. Uh, apparently, <laughs> Odyssey and Origins is part of a uh, ancient history trilogy. Mm. So, okay. I, is is it a is it a natural progression to go from Rome to Greece to sure. Vikings? Greece should come if you're going backwards, I guess. Yeah. No, hold on. Greece and then Rome and then. I believe the oh, first yeah, one is seems... Greece. Honestly, I can't remember now. Shit. Greece comes before Rome for sure. We're Vikings. No, no, no sorry. What the fuck I'm saying? It's just kind of Egypt. Constantly. Egypt. 
Greece and Rome. Okay. Greece and Rome is in one game, mm-hmm. and then Vikings. So that makes more yeah, sense. I guess so, yeah. yeah. Like Greece and Rome, like that's those are pretty similar. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Odyssey is the Greece and Rome one. Oh my god, Cassandra is so badass. I love her so much. There's also the native, like the American colonial American one, right? That one's Assassin's Creed Three, and they just came out with a remastered version. Yeah, that was the one that I disliked the most. Yeah, I think that one's the least popular for uh, everybody. People told me, like, you know, just keep at it. It eventually gets better, but... <laughs> time. Time. Yeah. Oh, uh, Persona 5 The Royal was announced, but the announcement is uh. more of an announcement of an announcement. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I literally, okay, you guys know that I do the other podcast, and I, I got into a rant about how, because, like, my, as much as I think the Persona games are great, my anger of the fact that they don't want to do female protagonists, and mm. um, I'm just, oh, I'm kind of mad, because when they first kind of said that this was going to be a thing, a lot of people were like, ooh, female protagonists, they're going to add it, just like they did in Persona 3, and then we got this trailer and it's very much seems to be a Persona 4 Golden situation where they're just going to add a female romanceable character. Um, so I'm, but we have to wait till April 25th to hear. Like, no one knows. We just, it, it all this is a trailer, and you'll understand this better than I will, Char. And it's just a girl that's like, no, I think the Phantom Thieves are evil, basically. Yeah. So she seems to be like an antagonist, yeah. like, but romanceable it could be, option, maybe. It could be a protagonist that will eventually. Like, I don't know. I mean, that's what I want it, I want to, it be. to be. That. And basically, that's what I want it to be. And it just, it makes me so mad. I ranted already on this on this podcast some eons ago about my frustration with the Persona creator and how he just doesn't see how he can do female protagonists. And it's like, ah, what? You can't have your cake and eat it too kind of thing. You can't have a bland character and then say, oh, but he's also straight and a male. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, I, because exactly. I guarantee if they say it's a female playable protagonist, I will play that game and I will stream it. No questions asked. Like, I'll just do it. You know, because I I want to play it, but I'm just mad. I'm just you I'm just be more unabashedly. <laughs> I mean, again, it's just a personal thing. It's not like I'm gonna make a difference by not buying it. It was just more of a personal moral thing because it made me angry. I'm not like mad at people buying and playing it. That's perfectly fine. It's a good game, um, but I'm just mad. I'm just so mad, and so I'm like waiting for this announcement and <laughs> what it actually means. Yeah, uh, <sighs> just a just a small little thing. I'm not sure if you guys got it yet or are gonna get it, but Uniqlo in Malaysia just came out with a bunch of Nintendo, not Nintendo, uh, Mario based stuff, which is Nintendo, but it's not, you know, it's specifically Mario stuff. Uh, mm. Their t-shirts are fucking ugly. I really hate the designs. <laughs> it's just like a t-shirt and they just paste a fucking picture on it. It's just so ugly. Holy shit. I have like a Venom and Spider-Man one from Uniqlo and those were like, people took the time to design that shit. And this one is just mm. so ugly. Holy shit. And the annoying thing is, male and female t-shirts have different designs. Oh, if I want to wear peach, come on. I have to... I, I can't wear it. It's a, f- a female cut. Come on, I'm not... <sighs> Look at this. On, guys. Look at this. That's like, there yeah. was some... <laughs> uh, well, some subreddit was showing off some Nintendo game where the difficulty was tied to characters. And so if you wanted to play as Toadette, you had to play on easy mode. And she was the only female character it's in the fucking shit. roster. Come Wait, what game is that? Guys. I don't remember. It's probably I, one I of the side scrolling one, maybe. The... Like Treasure yeah. Tracker, maybe? I don't know. Uh, it was like a mostly Toad cast. Mm, that sucks. Guys, come on. It's like. <laughs> Jeez. That's annoying. It's little yeah, microaggressions. Don't tie like difficulty that. to characters. That's yeah, dumb. especially changing the don't. gender. Oh my god. That's like, I mean, the gender just, just makes this... it especially makes it offensive. Worse, yeah. But, like, yeah, just don't do it. Like, just don't. Just let people choose. No Nintendo. <sighs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you make good games, Nintendo, but holy shit, are you fucking stupid? Yeah, so yeah. fucking stupid. They're really good at making games and nothing else, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> so, just, uh, uh, so, yeah. Uh, I have nothing else. I have nothing else to rant about. Yeah. So, do the thing. Yeah, we can do the thing. Uh, I am Sarah Scopic, S A R E H S C O P I C. I'll be someday on YouTube and Twitch. 
Uh, I'm also on Twitter. I, I will talk there, and I'll say hi to you also on Facebook. Um, I also, and through the Checkpoint XP cast, you can go to twitch.tv slash Checkpoint XP and see me there on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. And I also do another podcast on Fridays called Not Your Player 2, where we talk about being a woman and being a gamer. It's a fun time. Check us out and say hi. And I'm Fu Hemner, and I'm on YouTube. That's it. <laughs> Boopo no pew pew, and it'll be... You know where. Don't follow me. Okay. Uh, this has been. <laughs> Don't at me, bro. Yeah. This has been episode 152 of the Player Outro Podcast. Thank you very much for watching and listening. We will see you next time. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye.